Welcome to the next episode of Expert Showcase. Today on the show, we've got Danny Flood, who's going to show you and teach you how to create a 10-hour-a-week lifestyle business while traveling the world. Hey, Danny, how are you doing today? Hey, Chris, thanks for having me on your show. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I tell you, folks, I was so excited when Danny wanted to be on the show, and I was so honored because he's a successful lifestyle business entrepreneur that, um, you know, is kind of living the life a lot of people want to live, I can tell you from, from my own perspective. And, and when, I, when I thought about bringing Danny on, the other reason I was so psyched is I realized that, you know, as a coach, you have a chance to create a lifestyle business, whether you want to travel the world or not. So you definitely want to listen, definitely want to stick around. Remember, we go for about an hour, and at the very, very end, we're going to give you a special offer from Danny. But before we get into all of that, and before we have all the fun we're going to have today, as usual, we're going to go through Danny's hero's journey. And once again, we're going to talk about the beginning, the, the, the turning point, and the aftermath to getting Danny to where he is today. So Danny, before we dive into the deep down and dirty details, give us a quick overview of your hero's journey, where you started. Remember, yeah, like 30, 60 seconds, something like that, just a quick overview, where you started, kind of that low point you got to, or the point you got to, low or not, that turned it around, and then the aftermath, you know, where you're at today. Yeah, sure. So um, I've always had entrepreneurship in my DNA. Um, my father was an entrepreneur, uh, started several companies, uh, and he kind of grew me up to be an entrepreneur, grew me that way anyway, um, since I was a, a young uh, boy. Um, when I was seven, eight years old, I would go around, you know, knocking on people's doors, offering to take out their trash for them, um, stuff like that. You know, we I started up a, a pog business, which was like a little game. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, when I was about 10 or 11, um, just a series of, of businesses, a, a, a lot of you know trial and error, a succession of failures, um, a lot of a lot of failing, um, you know some successes, but it was it was certainly a hard one. Uh, <clears throat> I I joined the military. I've been a martial arts instructor. Um, I've been to an art school. I, I studied advertising. Uh, after that, I. I had like a, a big choice I had to make about the rest of my life, and um, realized that you know it was a big choice to make, and, and I wasn't really ready to kind of just dive into a conventional career path. So um, I just kind of at that point it was like sink or swim. Uh, I was I was homeless at that point, and uh, kind of just couch surfing at my cousin's place, and um, really just hit the hit the ground hard. You know, started to uh, offer advertising services to clients. Um, that grew, and eventually I, I picked up some good clients. And uh, uh, through a period of, of really like you know working hard, building myself up, you know reading one book business book per week, I, I was studying everything from Dan Kennedy, direct marketing, business systems. Um, I was able to to simplify what I was offering um, and really increase the profit margins significantly and uh, reduce my my working hours from uh, about. 60, 70 hours to 10 hours a week. Awesome. That's epic. It's, it's, it's kind of funny because as soon as you mentioned Dan Kennedy, a big smile came to my face because I knew through our interactions there's, there's somewhere deep inside there was a there was a GKIC or, or at least somebody, for those of you who don't know, Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle or you know at least somebody who have, who had who has studied Dan. I was fortunate enough um, to be, I'm fortunate enough to be friends with a couple of his marketers of the year, Charlie McDermott and Jeff Jean. Jim Kimba. I can't pronounce, Jeff's got this great Italian last name, can't pronounce it, but um, he sells $30,000 mattresses and makes a good living doing it. So anyway, but that's not the point of this episode. So it's great to, to kind of summarize that for our viewers. It was beautiful because Danny, you know, he was had this very eclectic background. Um, military arts kind of doesn't seem like it might fit together. Then again, I know somebody else who started off as an artist and went through West Point topic for another time. Um, but then as all great, you know, eventual great entrepreneurs go through, went through that couch surfing homeless period, 
and then finally said, hey, I, you know, I, I got to figure out how to turn this around. And by the way, it'd be much, you know, better to be able to travel the world, work, you know, 10 hours a week and do everything I want to do and still make a great living doing it um, rather than the 60 to 80 hours a week. And before I go along, one of the things I want everybody to really realize something, hard work is great. But there's an old story that people tell about a guy living on an island, and the short, short version is is that the guy living on the island is tr is coaxed into trying to create this huge business, um, and the Westerner finally says, after the guy on the island asked him why enough times, he says, so that you can build this big business and then retire and sell it and retire on an island, and the and the guy on the island just kind of laughs and casts his cast his fishing rod out again. So Danny, I, I applaud you. You're living on that island right now, man. It's, you know, he's in Bangkok. By the way, we forgot to tell folks he's coming to us live today from Bangkok, which is, you know, for people who grew up in the 80s, you know, the oriental city with the city. Anyway, we're going off on a way too big of a tangent. So let's get right into this. Let's get into Danny's hero's journey. Danny, tell us more about the beginning. Um, and let's find out more a little bit about where you came from and, and the beginning. Um, you know, pre-turnaround time. Um, sure. So to continue where I was, uh, I think that, um, you know, Dan Kennedy's books are a great value for um, what you pay for them. Um, you, you can buy them in, in like the NoBS books in, in most major bookstores. Um, I don't know if bookstores are still even around these days, but um, uh, so that's, that sounds like, you know, like a NoBS direct marketing, for example, like um, you can take uh, case studies from those books and apply them directly to your own business. So um, when, I, when I kind of first created my, my business, my online advertising business, I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I had an advertising degree, but it, it, it gave me skills on like Photoshop and stuff. I didn't know anything about web design. I had to teach myself that. I didn't know anything about online video marketing. I had to teach myself that. I, you know, I spent you know thirty five hundred dollars on one course uh, to learn online marketing stuff, and um, <clears throat> it was it was really kind of just 80, 90 percent learning, and then just the rest of it just testing stuff out. And um, you know, I'd offered it to to work for people for free at first, you know, if I had to, just so I could get some hands on experience and some results. Um, you know, so, it, it was a lot of work. Yeah, so let me interrupt you right there because. <clears throat> One of the things that's great, and we're talking about the beginning of his, I'll say his, uh, right now we're talking about the beginning of Danny's second life, so to speak, is, you know, after that couch surfing incident, this kind of sounds like, hey, this is where we're going to go, this is where we're going to go ahead, and that's, and that's great. One of the things I want everybody to realize is, is that free is definitely underrated in this in this society right now you've got a lot of big names telling you never to do anything for free and Danny's living proof that if you do it in the right way at the beginning to get some experience if you do it the right way you can build a successful business going on from there um, so you were doing so you were out there you were doing some stuff yeah, for free to get you of, um, yeah absolutely I think I think barter is, is a great thing to do um, especially uh, if you can it's it's usually hard to um, hey Chris, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, it dropped out for a second. Um, let's stop sharing it. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> um, you can edit that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's often hard to to close deals, especially if you're trying to get good clients. But if you can do some kind of trade, that that often is more. Um, Productive, you know. When I when I first learned how to do Google Maps optimization, for example, uh, for for small businesses, um, I just went to the the pizza place that I eat at. You know, that I used to eat at like several times a week, and just said, you know, hey, I'm, I'm learning about this. Uh, let me try it out. And and then once I had some proven results, it was easier to get other clients. I've also done a variety of, um, you know, when I learned web design, WordPress, uh, I, I would travel around. I would go to like the Philippines or someplace in Mexico and um, I would have a deal worked out where I or Thailand, you know, I'd say, you know, I'll help you um, get a website for your hotel. Uh, in exchange, I, I want a place to stay, um, my own room, and, and stuff for a month or so. And you know, I can save a lot of money that way. It takes me like two days to set up the website for that, and then I can just kind of do what I want. Um, I, I really like that approach as well. <clears throat> um, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, I think you know, Oscar Oscar Wilde said that anyone who lives within their means suffers from a lack of imagination. So um, there's there's always, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you really have to kind of come up with creative solutions to common problems. 
And if you just follow the conventional path, you know, doing the default path for every single problem that you face, whether it's money, uh, time, wanting to travel, then you're not really being entrepreneurial. You're, you're just kind of um, holding yourself back. And entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are really people who are willing to operate in that realm of uncertainty, in that realm of kind of chaos, and find the best way. And we can talk more about that. I, I guess I'm digressing a little bit here, but I think it's an important point to make. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure we'll touch more on that in the second half of today's episode. The, thing, the other thing I find interesting, you bring up the barber system, especially at the beginning. So remember, folks, we're focusing on the beginning before Danny's turnaround and before the, the turning point into, you know, you know, having an ultra successful business. Um, the other thing that I find interesting, I just came across this. I think, I think Danny, it was in the Facebook group that, um, that you invited me to, Worldwide Digital Nomads. Um, and I, somebody I think posted about there's a hostel like I think it's in the Philippines or something that's looking for artists and, and writers and bloggers and everything to come and they'll give them you know a free month or something like that if they just come and do the artistic things and it was it was amazing. Um, so the reason I bring it up is because for those of you who are at the beginning like Danny, you got to start and you want to when we talk about the 10 hour per week business in the second half and you want to get to that point. Um, just like Danny did, you got to go out and look and search for these very unique opportunities. And I think, you know, um, whether it's going to a hotel and, and uh, you know, whether it's going to a hotel and offering to do their website or do some social media for them or what have you, it's, you know, it's, you got to look for those unique opportunities. Right, Danny? Well, yeah, and there's, there's definitely growing opportunities out there. Um, apprenticeships are, are growing now. They're, um, there's a lot of uh, remote virtual companies who are offering apprenticeships where you can earn uh, a sum and uh, they, you come out to a place like Ho Chi Minh City, for instance, and um, they put you in an apartment and, and you basically work for them. I mean, and, and they, they give you a flat rate each month. Um, and, and you're really learning from, from you know, proven entrepreneurs who are experienced and um, there's, there's really no price value you can put on that. Um, <coughs> As, as far as, you know, if, if you really want to make a change in your life, whether it's, uh, I mean, my, my book, uh, Buy Your Own Island, is, is all about, you know, helping people realize whatever their island is, whatever their dream goal for their life is, uh, helping them actualize it. And a big part of, if you want to make a change in your life, a big dramatic change in your life, whether it's career change or um, whether you want to start a business or travel the world, you really need to be able to give yourself a runway. Um, and we see that, that that model has proven itself. Um, if, if you go to Tropical MBA, for instance, they have an apprenticeship. I don't know if it's an apprenticeship, but they have an opportunity where you can go to a hotel, I think for about six months or so, and um, they cover your, your room and board, and in exchange you help the, the hotel with like marketing you know, for a couple hours a day. And uh, th this model has been proven, you know. I mean, if, if it's 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 the old uh, strategy of trading space for time, you know. Uh, you, you just you, you really gotta just fail forward and, and get as much hands-on experience as you can, and um, just keep learning until until it finally it cracks and you, you find the opportunity, and then you can just kind of put everything you have into it. Yeah, that's and that's awesome. I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, I'm quite sure a lot of our viewers are going to head right out and look for Tropical MBA because six months at a hotel just to help with some marketing sounds like a great plan. So let me wrap up the beginning segment. What what we've heard so far is that you know Danny's been through a roller coaster, and when he started this very successful business that he's got right now, um, traveling the world and and uh, you know being a worldwide digital nomad. Um, he did a lot of very unique things to do it. Now we're going to get to the turning point. So Danny, in the first part, we really talked about the beginning and kind of before the business got successful. Um, in every business, in every successful business, in every successful life, there comes a turning point where you go from doing free, doing apprenticeships, finding very unique things to do, to either hitting a low or to figuring something out. And what I want to focus on for about the next six to eight minutes is just that turning point. You know, when did you see it happen? When, you know, could you see it coming? Um, what did you do when it got here? Stuff like that. So, so let's start with the, you know, your, you know, 
like I said, we go back, you're, you're doing all this stuff for free, you're starting to do some travel, you're starting to do work for people. First of all, did you see that turning point coming? I mean, were you like, you know, kind of look at the head, go, you know, look at a head going, wow, I can see this out a month or two and, and things are going to get better? Or did it just sneak, did the, did the time things started to change to sneak up on you? Um, I don't know if there was any single turning point. I think that um, it's it's something that's really accumulated. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've changed a lot over the last five, six years. I'm a lot more confident, a lot more self-aware, um, a lot more capable, but there wasn't a single turning point. It was kind of a, a, an accumulation of events, and um, it, it's really just about, you know, we all wrestle with feelings of inadequacy, um, you know, where maybe we're not getting enough uh, validation, enough positive feedback and we tend to draw upon reference experiences so if, if something doesn't go the way we want it to then um, how do we respond to that event you know how to respond to that stimulus do we blow it out of proportion and say you know let's say for instance um, you get rejected by someone who you're interested in and you, you can blow it out of proportion and say oh well, you know uh, I guess men are interested in me or I guess women are interested in me um, that's not the case you know if, if you can accumulate enough uh, Validation, whatever area it is, uh, enough reference experiences that show that you know you are good enough, that you are um, you are whole, you are complete just the way you are. Uh, I, I think that can make a longer, more lasting change than if you try to pinpoint some single isolated event. So yeah. to accumulate reference experiences, I mean, if you ever come to a fork in the road, you know, if you ever have a chance to take action, just just do it. Um, I think travel is a great way to get validation and, and you also learn a lot about the world at the same time. I mean, we see a lot of people who, who kind of find that validation that they've been seeking for their whole lives when they start to travel, um, you know, because everyone's jealous of them and they're so cool now because they travel. So whatever it is, I mean, <clears throat> you need to find something that you can be really passionate about, something that you can you can excel at. and. If, if you can get enough reference experiences to show that you know you are you are good just as you are, you know you have these these talents, you have these passions that are awesome, and you you don't feel those this feelings of insecurity of inadequacy anymore. And when you're in that kind of place where you're comfortable in your own skin, um, I think then you're in a position to kind of create something meaningful and really make a positive impact in the world. Yeah, boy, that is, that is so deep, and I'm so glad you said that. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting. One of the things I want the viewers to all key in on is the fact that you know it wasn't one single you know turning point. A lot of times we hear, and you've heard this before, about that hockey stick moment where you know you're going along like this, and then all of a sudden you hit this point right here, and things just boop, shoot up overnight. And um, while in some cases, in very rare cases, it still works, like, you know, Danny's a perfect testament to the fact that it's all about growing and your experiences along the way till you hit that critical mass of having enough experiences and enough of not only the experience to be able to prove yourself, but enough of that downtime and kind of going through enough stuff that you are ready to come out on the other side. Right, Danny? Yeah, well, you don't you don't fell a tree with um, one blow of the axe. You know, you keep hacking away at it, um, and gradually uh, the tree falls. You know, but it, it it's it's not a single isolated event. I mean, you are what you consistently do. Um, you have to to make what whoever it is you want to be, whatever it is you want to become. You have to ingrain that into who you are and make it a habit, and consistently practice that habit, and. I think the thing that we struggle with the most, whatever it is, if there's any area we want to go in in life, I mean, whether it's we want to get in shape, let's say, like physical shape, is that we make it really hard to adhere to that consistency, to that habit. Um, so, so it's really about finding the inflection point where you can get the highest lever, get the most leverage. If you have a lever that's long enough, you can move the world. So if you can make it so simple that you can adhere to it and get the maximum results, the minimum amount of effort, I think then you're, you're on the right path. Excellent. So let me ask you this. We're, um, we still, there's one more thing in the whole turning point. I know there wasn't one single turning point, but from that, that low point or from the lull before you created the, the successful business you have today, and we're going to talk about that success in the aftermath segment coming up, but before we get there, what if I just had to say right now from that 
turning point? What was the biggest learning, the biggest aha, um, the biggest thing? You know, not necessarily look at it as a turning point, but it's that biggest thing. You know, somebody if somebody said, hey, boom, biggest thing you learned during the turning point, what would it be? Uh, the biggest thing that I learned in the turning point, um, well, you know, like I said, it's it's really about instilling a daily kind of, um, you know, when I, when I was younger, I, I always felt like I had a chip on my shoulder, like I had something to prove, like I had um, something was incomplete with me, you know, because I, I wasn't successful. And, um, you know, the world was telling me that, you know, it, I'm gonna have to start at the bottom, and and, and I, I didn't feel that way. I felt like I was I was perfectly capable. I was perfectly intelligent, um, but I don't I don't feel those same feelings of insecurity anymore. But I, but I, I do I do have a daily practice where you know I I, I have multiple daily practices. So it, it's kind of become a consistent habit where, like a gratitude journal, for example. You know I'll focus on the positive things so that um, when I face an obstacle, a roadblock that I can respond to it positively. I can I can interpret the event in a positive light. Um, I have you know different exercises that I I, I I practice that I've developed through through habit, and um, that's that's really been what what I've kind of accumulated as a result of um, this this turning point, this this change in my uh, my thought behaviors and patterns. Wow, that is. That is awesome. And I tell you, from meeting with you, from prepping the show, um, I can never picture you with a chip on your shoulder. I mean, you know, you, you're a very calm and, and it's just, you know, you're, you're a very calm and, and nice guy. I can't ever picture you with a chip on your shoulder. So it's great that you were that self-aware. And the other thing our viewers, I really want to take, I really want you to take out of this is that, you know, he's created, during your turning point, you need to start figuring out the habits that will create a successful aftermath. And that's really the key there. So now that we've talked about Danny's beginning and the turning point, let's go ahead and get into the aftermath. This is what I'm sure a lot of people also want to hear about the great successes. So you're, you, you know, you came from a point of doing stuff for free and, and trading, you know, trading time for space. I love, by the way, I love that saying, and I'm probably showing my ignorance by going, I've never heard that, but I love that saying. Um, so you were trading time for space. Now you're at the point where you've come past the turning point where your business is on the upswing, starting to be successful and becoming the successful business it is today. So let's talk, let's talk about that journey in the, in the aftermath. Um, let's start off with this. This is a question I've never asked anybody before. Um, do you remember getting into the aftermath, your first big pain, big pain client, and and um, you know, you don't have to mention their name if you don't want to, but do you remember your first big pain client and what your reaction was to when you finally flipped from that, you know, oh, I've got to trade time for space to holy Toledo people actually want to pay me this amount of money to do what I'm doing? Yeah, it's, it's trading space for time. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, again, it, it wasn't really like a single um, event that really happened. But the, the kind of the turnaround happened when, as I mentioned, I was reading a lot of marketing books, and um, I, I had to basically invent my whole business, you know, from scratch. And that includes like uh, the pricing models, um, you know, how to close clients, how to write contracts. And so I was basically kind of making this all up as I went, and uh, I guess you know uh, what happened was I I didn't just pick up a client. I, I had clients that I I built a lot of relationships with people, and I realized that you know if, if someone's going to buy one service from me, they they could buy several other services. And so I just kind of learned like you know what was the value ladder that I could offer. So you might have something at the bottom of the value chain, which is like a, a service that's say. One hundred fifty dollars or three hundred dollars, and then um, you know if that goes well, then they might need something else that's a thousand dollars. And then if that goes well, then they want to they have something that you built for them, and they need to market it. So um, you know maybe they'll pay you fifteen hundred dollars a month after that. So it, it was really not for my existing services that I already had, but um, creating new services for my existing clients and, and just being indispensable enough that. Uh, you know, they depended on me to um, keep their business at the top, you know, to keep the, the customers coming into the door, and, and we did that really well. Um, 
you know, I could I could promise them results and I deliver them. So as long as as long as they're getting what they want, they're happy to give me what I want. So um, you know, I, I was at that point where I <clears throat> I'd done that, um, and I, I still had you know other things that I things I made mistakes along the way that that were still to come, but. Um, I already had this one business that was making a lot of money, and, and you know I, I tried some other things that didn't work, um, but but I was I had about five people working for me, so I could outsource most of the work, mm -hmm. and I was working about two hours per day at that point, and um, just getting recurring income each month from my clients. So then I I booked a one-way ticket to South America and uh, spent about six months down there, um, and then you know at first I was kind of just going back and forth. Uh, you know, between home and just traveling, and I just go somewhere for a few months or six months. Um, but now I'm just kind of permanently on the road. Uh, I've been traveling now for about 18 months now, uh, with a base here in Thailand, and just kind of exploring this whole region around of the world. And um, yeah, so I've been to. 30 something countries now, I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is epic. And one of the things I love so much about what you just said um, and the direction you took the question in is because the way the question was asked is what most people think is that there's going to be this one major client that's going to set them up and, and just kind of skyrocket them. And what you said was, was so intense and so deep and so correct, which is. You don't have to be out looking. I'm going to translate. You don't have to be out looking for that one big client. If you have clients in your pipeline, whether you're charging them, whether you're giving them something for free, or whether you're charging them $50 a month, $100 a month, or $1,000 a month, that one of the best ways to increase your business is by saying, what else can I offer this client that they need? Because I've proven I can, it, that's in my that's in my space, and that they'll actually want to get for me that I can do, or that at least I can make money on. Because I've proven I can deliver for them. And let's face it, businesses like to deal with people who prove they can deliver for them, especially entrepreneurs. Um, you know, especially you know small, you know whether it's big business, small business, medium sized business, whatever you know whatever it is, businesses want to deal with people who deliver for them. And let me ask you this let me ask you this question because I was about to take it in a direction that I didn't even ask you about your ideal clients. So at that point, those clients you were working with, were they entrepreneurs, were they small businesses, were they solopreneurs? You know, at that point, not necessarily today, but at that point, who were who were your clients that you ended up building more services for? Um, I, I don't think that it's it's good to work with um Entrepreneurs or startups, well, maybe it depends, but um, not people who are kind of just just starting out. It's it's much better to work with uh, companies that are, are more established, who already have com uh, excuse me employees on the payroll, uh, because then you you're much more sure that they actually have money to spend and that they're willing to um, you know pay someone full time if they have employees working for them. Um, so I had kind of a sweet spot with. Uh, Small medium enterprises, companies with maybe, um, I'd say between, I got, I'd want to say low and maybe 20 employees, but, but more realistically, 30 employees to about 100 employees. Uh, companies like that was kind of a sweet spot because um, they would have a lot of employees to kind of uh, contractors and employees that would run the operations, but then they don't really have a marketing department, so. You know, they they might have it might be something that they delegate to like the assistant manager or to um, you know some vice some VP role or something like that. So they don't really have someone who's um, kind of really qualified in this regard and who can really bring um, specialization to this to this business. Dude, you're an epic genius. That's all I gotta say. And, and and you know, I say that in all truth and sincerity. You're an epic genius because as you're saying that, it's like. Well, duh, it makes perfect sense. You know, companies with 30 to 50, maybe 100 employees are focused on running their business, are focused on building their business the way they know how. And most of those companies don't have the money to invest in a marketing department or don't think of investing in a true marketing department or have just started to think about it because they're growing. And there Danny comes in and says, hey, I can do this. 
and you know, and you know, brings in the smile and just says, "Hey, I'll deliver for you." And brings in that confidence, and and not only am I complimenting Danny, but I want you all to really hear that and realize it. Part of the reason that makes Danny successful is he knows what he can deliver. He knows he can deliver, and he walks in with that position of strength and like, "Look, I can do this for you." And why? Because during his turning point. When he was giving away stuff for free, trading space for time. Is that is is that the right? I'm sorry. Is that the right way to say it? Trading space for time. Yeah, trading <laughs> space for time, and I, I still do that actually. Um, you know, because when I when I stopped, um, I was traveling a lot, and I kind of lost interest in the work I was doing with uh, the marketing stuff. So I I, I switched careers, to, so to speak, and uh, began writing. And now I have uh, four best-selling books at the moment, but. Back then, I was I was on my savings, you know, as I was trying to get my first book off the ground, and I had to relearn everything from scratch. You know, I was back to square one. So, you know, I, I did the same, you know, trading space for time, where I was um, basically hopping around from country to country, and, and I would, you know, do trades with people. I, I did two trades, um, like I mentioned, the Philippines and Thailand, um, a few places. I, I was helping to, I was doing volunteer work in Taiwan, where I was helping to build a global village. Um, and all that time, you know, I was really just trying to re reduce the amount of pressures that I had to face, the things I had to deal with, so that I, I could just focus on writing the book and, and writing the best book that I could possibly produce. Um, so that, that's I, I did that same, you know, trading space for time tactic um, when I transitioned out of that business into what I'm what I'm doing now. And yeah, and again, you know, to expand on on the the customer profile, um, you, you know, those those businesses which I mentioned. Um, a lot of them were family businesses. A lot of them did like um, home-based services, like construction, um, and they they would often have like their their son or their daughter who managed the marketing. You know? So they would be doing the marketing, but then they would also be doing like a bunch of admin work. And and you know I think that that's where the, the real opportunity is because there's a lot of companies out there like that who has uh, someone who's managing maybe an AdWords campaign, for example, but they have no idea what they're doing. You know, they don't. They don't know to to. They just want to get their business up at the top of Google, but they don't have like a landing page. You know, that they send the traffic to. For so it's it's like directing all this traffic in, but then it's all going back out a, a whole lot. You know. Yeah. So if a number like that, there's there's a real need there. There's a problem where you can come in and and fix that problem. Then you have a really good business opportunity. Yeah, definitely, and we're gonna, and I think we'll talk more about that in the in the ten hour in in the in in section two. What I want to wrap this kind of section up with to to kind of wrap that thought up um, for those of you who are going while well, I'm not a marketer, the nugget that Danny just gave you is worth all the time you're going to spend watching this because buried inside that nugget is that you look for businesses who have a need that you can fill but that are currently being filled by somebody in the organization who doesn't really have that skill set and would be better off someplace else, who maybe is a self-taught programmer and learned a little bit about WordPress, but really isn't somebody who can make a WordPress site great. Maybe it's marketing, maybe it's advertising. You know, it could be anything. So take your skill, you know, to, to get to this great aftermath that Danny's got to, you take your skill, whatever that is, you find where it fits in with a company that you know, you know, a, an industry or a company that you know people are not complete, you know, are doing two and three and four jobs, and you price it right so that people want to, you know, so that people want to hire you. We could talk forever about this. I'm going to kind of wrap up our hero's journey segment here today. We're talking with Danny Flood, who started off as a, you know, I'll say a military artist, not really a military artist, but a, but somebody artistic and was in the military. Went through, you know, the the period of couch surfing and is now on the other side, living his living what appears to be his dream now, being an author and living a you know living a lifestyle where he's created a 10 hour week lifestyle business that is that is very successful. He's traveling the world, been over 30 countries right now he's coming to us live from Bangkok which is just awesome we're gonna to actually it's epic that's you know gonna be careful I think somebody just trademarked awesome so you know it's it's now epic so um, we're gonna take a very very quick break once you stick with us through the break after the break 
We're going to talk to Danny about how to create a 10 hour a week lifestyle business while traveling the world. And remember, at the very end of today's show, we've got a special offer from Danny. So I want you to hang out, uh, give us 30, 45 seconds, and we'll be right back. If you're a coach and realize that being on an episode of Expert Showcase would give you the video content you need to skyrocket your coaching practice, head over to expertshowcase.com and apply to be on the show. If you're a coach, author, or speaker and realize that the power of branded video content is the thing that's going to set you apart and we'd like to explore all the great branded vlog, webinar, and web TV show options we have or just want to get to know us better, head over to videocontent.agency check out what we've got going on there's a work with us uh, tab at the top send us your information we'll get back to you and we'll see if we're a good fit to work together and welcome back we're now getting into the expert focus segment of our show today on our today on our show we have Danny Flood a, a very successful entrepreneur who's living a living the lifestyle business lifestyle um, and if you didn't hear about uh, if you didn't watch the beginning and didn't watch Danny's hero's journey to find out how military artists got went from doing doing that and went through the couch surfing period and, and kind of turned it into a ultra successful lifestyle business, you definitely want to go back and watch that. So, Danny, now our folks, we're going to get we're going to get right into our expert folk, expert focus segment because um, I know my ears are ringing. People are begging to hear this because everybody wants to understand how they can live a how they can live and learn how they can live a ten hour a week. Man, I can talk today. Lifestyle business. So, without any further ado or babbling from me, what I'd like you to do is give the folks a real quick overview of what we're going to talk about in this segment. Then I'll give them the three bullet points, and then we'll dive right in. Yeah, sure. So in this in this section, we're going to talk about how to uh, create a location independent business so that you can uh, earn money online while you sleep, while you travel, go on vacation, play with your family, uh, what have you. It'll give you the time and freedom to really do the things that you want to do to pursue the passions that you have and to uh, hopefully find the ultimate higher purpose for your life in the, in the process. Awesome. Epic. That is, that's just, I can't wait to dig in. And part of that, got, got to say something personal. Part of the reason I really wanted to have you on the show is because after looking back at my life, I realized that through everything I was doing, whether I was rich or poor, um, I was always living a lifestyle business. In other words, I was creating a business around whatever lifestyle I wanted to live. I mean, there was times when I was making six figures plus and I really wanted to live in the big house. There was times when, you know, I was dead broke, but I was making just enough to pay the bills and I was happy with the lifestyle and I was happy with, you know, the amount of responsibilities and everything. So, um, so this is going to be, I, I can't wait to learn more because, you know, I'm looking at taking my business, other people's business to the next lifestyle level. So I'm going to take a breath now. I only breathe once an hour. So I'll take my breath now and we'll dive right into it. We're going to talk about being a lazy programmer, creating systems and leverage. So let's talk about the first concept here, a concept when we were prepping, um, we talked about as being the lazy programmer. What are we talking about here, Danny? Yeah, sure. So um, the concept of the lazy programmer is that, um, well, okay, it's, it's a simple concept and it's, it's also a complicated one. So I'll give you the, the short answer is um, the, the lazy programmer is basically you don't have to start from scratch with if you have an idea, if you want to create something, you don't need to necessarily need to start from scratch. Uh, the concept of lazy, lazy programmer is you can start designing code yourself um, from the first line or you can build off of code that other people have already laid the way for. Um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they they make a mistake of, of being really kind of creative and, and kind of wasting time on the wrong things. When one of the most um, important traits of successful entrepreneurs is the speed of implementation and not being too creative and, and just really implementing fast. Um, how quickly you are able to implement the uh, processes of your your would be company is a big part of the game. And um, I, I don't know if we're going to talk about this a little more later, but there's, there's a, a concept called the Kinefin framework. It's C-Y-N-E-F-I-N. And basically, the Kinefin framework is built, uh, made up of four quadrants. So it, it divides up work into four different parts. 
Uh, you have simple work, complicated work, complex, and chaotic. And in the last century, we've mostly been doing uh, simple and uh, complicated, uh, I'm sorry, com yeah, complicated work, which basically requires you to go to college, which requires you to get a degree. Um, but it's, it's something that you can learn from a textbook. Entrepreneurship is not really something, the things that entrepreneurship throws at you are not things that you can learn from a textbook. Uh, so entrepreneurs tend to spend most of their time within the complex and chaotic domains where there is nothing, you know, no blueprint for how you can do it. So if, if there are certain processes in your, your company, you need to learn how to, one, what, what can, how can it borrow a knowledge that some other entrepreneur has already acquired or someone else has already acquired? Uh, because whenever you do something for the first time, it's, it's very, very hard. But then to repeat it after that, is, it gets easier and easier and easier. And you can do it almost without a second thought. It can be systemized. Uh, so you really need to identify where those inflection points are and, and where you need to be spending your time. And, and entrepreneurs have to it, sort of um, sacrifice small gains in order to get the, the large gains, the bigger picture. Um, yeah. so, so like I said, it's kind of a short answer and, and also uh, more complex as you kind of get into it, I suppose. Yeah, well, the beautiful thing I think we talked about is that um, we won't go too much more deep into, and I, uh, I'm never going to be able to pronounce that name. I want to say cuneiform, but that's not it. Um, the, the, the process, go ahead and, and repeat the name of the process again. Uh, it's the Kinefin framework. Kinefin, and, um, okay. And, and yeah, here's what I was going to interrupt you for a second. I think a little prepping. Aren't you going to include something about that in your in your next book or or um, in a future in a future book? Or did you include it in one of your previous books? Um, no, I, I haven't. It's it's on Wikipedia if, if you look at it. Okay. Um, but but uh, to to go back to laser programmer, the I'm looking at my book right now. The definition is. Um, the, the simplest solution is best. You know, embrace simplicity um, and, and really know what to focus on. Um, and that, that's why I brought in the, the Kinefin framework because uh, as an entrepreneur, you really have to understand what your responsibilities are and, and how you allocate your time, where you allocate your time. And I'd love to talk more about that, but it's, yeah. it's such a broad, complex topic that I, I didn't want to get too long-winded. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's, and I'm glad you brought it up. It's interesting because a lot of people, you know, our viewers who stuck with us and realized that a lot of times we say things like lazy programmer doesn't always apply to programming, um, have realized by now that the, the advice Danny's just given you applies to everything. Um, from a programming standpoint, it's the same reason why people are making boatloads of money doing WordPress templates, and it's the same reason why Word, you know, most WordPress sites have some sort of template to start off with because if you had to code everything from scratch on WordPress, it's going to take you a long time and not be worth your time. Um, you know, the, the, the trouble with us entrepreneurs and whether we want to live a lifestyle business or not is the fact that, you know, we have this desire to learn, this desire to do everything. You know, it's funny because desire comes from the word T, you know, desire to sire. You know, we always want to create things. Um, and we sometimes let that get in the way of, um, you know, of progress. I mean, I'll tell, I'll tell everybody a quick funny story. I did this once I happen to have a background in IT and and the short short version is is that um, yeah I spent probably about 72 straight hours with no sleep coding something that in the end if I just have spent you know a couple of bucks and three day and, and three minutes of research I could have you know bought for I could have basically bought and uh, you know afterwards I felt the great feeling of accomplishment and I was also kicking everything in the room because you know no sleep will tend to do that to you so the re you know that that's you know the reason I bring it up is because whether it's programming whether it's advertising you know there's this new site canva out there which is helping people make great um, graphics great images um, and shortcutting it for people, that sort of thing. You gotta find the shortcuts and treat the word lazy not as it was in the old days, which is negative, but treat it with a positive and say you're, you know, you're smart. You're going out and looking for these things, right, Danny? Yeah. If if you can get a job done in in five minutes, then it doesn't make sense to spend five hours on it. And I'm not saying to to go out and, and plagiarize, but 
um, you can build on the shoulders of giants, as it were. And um, you know, Ruby on Rails is a perfect example from the programming world. You know, Ru Ruby on Rails builds on all of the programming languages that came before it to make applications much easier to develop. And there's a there's a quote from uh, Robert Greene which uh, puts an emphasis on this point in the, in the book 48 Laws of Power. Uh, he says, use the wisdom, knowledge, and legwork of other people to further your own cause. Not only will such assistance save you valuable time and energy, it will give you a godlike aura of efficiency and speed. Never do yourself what others can do for you. And, and so it, it, that godlike aura of efficiency and speed is really vital for lifestyle designers, um, entrepreneurs who want to survive in the new world that is coming because, you know, the envelope is going to keep being pushed further. And so to give you an example of like how I, how I might do this, um, I always get compliments on my book covers. You know, I, I design my own book covers, but what people don't realize is that I can design my book covers in maybe one or two hours. And the reason I, I can do that is because I use uh, templates. You know, I use templates from Shutterstock.com um, I can go on there and search for the kind of graphics that I'm looking for, and for ten dollars I can get you know a really really great design, and I can customize it any way I want. I can add other images in there, and I, I always you know people always say your cover looks amazing, and I'm like yeah, and it, it, they they don't understand that it, I, I spent ten dollars and, and two hours on it, um, and, and you know like this is totally counterintuitive to the way most people work because I, I went to an advertising uh, the, uh, the Art Institute, I got an advertising degree and you know they were always you know, fo forcing us to come up with comps from scratch, you know, first starting with pen, uh, pen and paper, and it was a really long process. You know, we'd have to come up with maybe ten comps a week and you know, maybe over a period of like four weeks we'd finally get like a, a finished logo, for example, uh, which might work if you're in an advertising agency you know, working on five hundred million dollar contracts, but if you're an entrepreneur, you know you don't have that luxury. You don't have those kind of resources of time and money. Uh, you have to to come up with the best solution in the simplest simplest way possible in the least amount of time possible. Yeah, exactly. And that actually flows us right. And that's 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 epic. That is that is such epic advice. And that flows us right into the second point, I believe, which is create systems. So. You know, the first step, you took templates and you realize that you have to templatize everything and walk on and stand and walk on, you know, stand on the shoulders of giants, walk on the, you know, you know, I, I love the quote, my memory's awful, so I'll go back and replay it. Um, but then it moves into creating systems, because once you have all that, the next level of automation is systems, right? Yeah, um, in, in my, my book, I... Uh, I'm looking at my book right now to refresh my memory. Um, I have two types of businesses which I mentioned in the book. One is an ELF business and one is a HALF business. And ELF stands for easy, lucrative, and fun. Um, so it's, it's a business that you, you love to, to get up and work on. You, you really love the customers. You love the product. You love interacting with customers. Um, you're making money hand over fist and you feel great. Uh, a HALF business is, is one that you just kind of get a really <laughs> feeling about. And there are different characteristics of an elf business and a half business. And I think that you can transition from a half business, hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating business to an elf business. In fact, I think that's one of the best ways to do it. Uh, if you look at Tim Ferriss as an example, um, you know, he had a business which was basically bleeding him dry, a supplement business. And then he realized that I could implement certain processes, I could implement systems. And, and find leverage points in this business. I could outsource certain things, and I could remove myself from the business. And and that's that's where systems can really come into place. And I think to to really get really good at, at creating systems, I think you need to have enough hands-on experience at whatever it is you're doing, so that you can find the best way to achieve the desired result. Whether it's uh, a customer satisfaction system, so that you you have the highest percentage of customer satisfaction and you can systemize so that all of the milestones in the communication between you and the customer have been identified and you identify certain events that happen at each milestone. That becomes your customer care system. So in, in my business, in my advertising business, for example, uh, one milestone might be 
uh, I create a customer care system. And one milestone might be when a new client signs a contract. So when, when that event happens, I make sure that a certain event follows that, follows that milestone. That they, so they, they receive like a, a gift from me, maybe a professional letter that you know, invites them, has my signature on it, invites them to, uh, lays out the expectations for the project ahead and, and invites them to communicate with me at any time. If they have any questions, and then maybe I, I send them like a, a Starbucks gift card. Yeah. So that's an example of something that adds that professional touch in a way that we can deliver a great result consistently because even though that it might be like a web design business, this is a way that we can stand head and shoulders above other web design businesses because there's a serious problem where after the contract is signed between the contractor and the client, the communication drops off after that. And that's a big complaint that clients have when they work with contractors in businesses like that. So we identified that need, identified that problem, and instilled a system in place, identified these milestones of communication so that we can deliver an excellent result consistently. Well, and that's, and that's you know, it's funny because you said so much in there. My brain is my brain's now spinning, which is, which is great, and that's epic. And the, the, the thing I was thinking about, so a couple things real quick. One, it's great that you did that for systems, and when you were talking about it, all I could think about was the concept, you know, that Dan, that Dan Kennedy talks about. I mean, I forget if it's called the big thunk or whatever, but where you basically, you know, if you had somebody who is a large value contract, you know, you FedEx them something the day after they sign the contract to boom, you know, you know, you FedEx them a basically a thank you box, that sort of thing, so that they know how much you how much you care. And it's it's more about setting yourself apart, which is the concept I really want our viewers to get, you know, to, to get out of that whole thing. Whether you got the money or not to do, you know, a big package or a FedEx or something like that, find something that you can do in your current, and Danny, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it sounds like what you're saying is find something you can do in your current business that your other competitors are not doing that you do for your clients that sets you apart, um, whether it's a letter, whether it's opening a line of communication, whether it's giving a private call in number, just something that your competitors aren't doing that immediately sets you apart from the competition and immediately cements in the competition or immediately cements in your client's mind that you are the right person to work with. Is that kind of where you're coming from? Um, in, in that aspect, as far as differentiation, yes. Um, it, it's a way to, I mean, we can say, yes, we design better websites than the other guy. But then, you know, everyone, they're going to say the same thing about me, and, and who's really telling the truth? Um, but but if, if you really, if we're talking about differentiation here, um, and, and then I want to kind of tackle this as a two-part question. So first, I'll focus on differentiation. Um, it, this kind of goes back into the idea of unique propositions and putting forth um, uh, things that make your business unique. So it could be a unique sales proposition. Um, it could be a unique experience proposition. So that's like when you go to Disneyland and everything is you know, tailored to, to evoke a certain emotion from the moment you arrive, um, a certain feeling. That's an experience proposition, that experience you get when you go to Disneyland. It could be um, a unique offer proposition if you have a really compelling offer. It could be um, a unique safety proposition. So um, you know, if you offer a double money back guarantee, that's another way to separate yourself from your competitors. Right. Uh, so there, there are very there are different ways of being unique, and one of the, the most obvious and, and still overlooked ways is is to excel through service. And yeah. the second part of that question I want to add is, if you're going to create systems like this, uh, let me ask you: if you've ever been in like a situation where maybe you had an argument with someone, or maybe you had some heated conversation, and and 30 minutes later you're driving in the car and you're thinking. Oh, I should have said that. You know. Oh, I should have said that instead of this. Or, or maybe you were in an interview or something, and you said, I, "I wish I had said that instead." When you have those aha moments, those become the things that you install in the system for next time. Thanks. So, when, whenever you have like something that you identify as like, "Oh, I should have done this," like you're, you're going to do it, probably do it wrong the first time. You know, it's not going to be optimal. But then you say, "Oh, that would have been great if I had done this." Then you document that and you put that into the system. Epic. That is, and, and I think that's a great place because, as you all can tell, Danny's got much more information in the book um, and in other areas about creating systems. Um, I think it's an epic place to leave, and, and the, the 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 kind of the note I like to wrap up the create systems section on is whenever that aha moment hits, which you want to think is the next time I will versus I wish or I should. 
Um, I wish and I should are very closed comments and make you feel very upset. I will, you know, next time I will is a very empowering comment. Uh, but Danny, you, you hit the nail on the head. I can't tell you how many times, even in my own business, it's like, okay, you know, you know, okay, what, you know, oh, geez, next time, you know, this didn't happen right this time. So next time, you know, I will, you know, next time I will do this. So, um, and that kind of leads us into, I think a little bit, um, maybe it's a stretch, but we'll go there anyway, into leverage. So during the, the, the third part here, we're going to talk about leverage. Um, Danny, when you say leverage, what do, what do we really mean here? Yeah, sure. So um, I believe Archimedes said that if you give me a lever long enough, I can move the world. And leverage is essentially what separates um, entrepreneurs from employees. Employees have no leverage. They, they trade their time for money, um, whether it's, it's physical work, whether it's work they have a degree for. Um, they have a very, very minimal amount of leverage. Entrepreneurs have a responsibility to themselves, to their company, to their customers, to bake in as much leverage into their business as possible. Whether it's in the marketing systems, whether it's um, in the product that they deliver, we always have to ex ex strive to excel and push the envelope further. Um, because we want to do better and better and better because it's, it, we always have to deal with competition. Um, but most importantly, we have to compete against ourselves. So it, it's, it's really about identifying where can the process be improved? Where can the system be improved? And what can I do to create more leverage in this area? Um, it could be soft, installing software. You know, if, if we have a problem, like if, you know, one, one really good way to identify where you can build in leverage and, and is to look at problems as opportunities. And to do this, all you have to do is ask why. Uh, and there's a technique I mentioned in the book, it's called the five whys technique. So if, if something's like causing stress, if there's something going awry in the business, ask why. Like, you know, if, if I'm having trouble scheduling interviews, for example, um, maybe it's just because I'm not good at, at, at this area, maybe I need to install a scheduling app, maybe I need to get an assistant. Um, and, and leverage is really, you know, it comes back to that, that concept of, of getting the best results uh, for the least amount of effort possible. Right. And, um, and, and I like to call these hacks, you know, because uh, the three books I've written since Buy Your Own Island all focus on hacks. Um, so, for example, I, I mean, if I can give an example uh, of leverage, I, I like, look, we'll go back to working out, you know, because I. I um, for, for years, I spent, you know, five, six days a week working out, exercising, maybe going to the gym, working a different body part. And I kind of hit this plateau where I wasn't making progress. And, and then I kind of stepped back and instead I did one workout per week and did it the right way and then and focused on my diet well enough that I was able to make huge gains and I, I gained about 15 pounds of muscle yeah. and really hit my sweet spot. Um, so another example like might be if, if you have three employees who are licking envelopes, for example, and, and sealing them, and you only have one employee who's sealing envelopes, it doesn't matter how fast those, those three employees are, are sealing the envelopes because you have uh, only one employee who's putting the stamps on them. So that's a bottleneck. That's an example of a potential problem where you need to kind of create more leverage. So whether it's it's adding another employee to stamp the envelopes because they're piling up, or whether you can get a software that can do it for you, that's wow. another chance to build leverage into the process. So there, there's a certain point where doing more is not going to doing more in one area is not going to create better results, but rather focusing on another area and either streamlining it or systemizing it so that you can get the desired result faster, cheaper, um, better quality, then you really hit the sweet spot. Yeah, and it's so it's so great how you tied all that back in because really, you know, leverage is, you know, it goes back to the first two things, you know, being, you know, a lazy programmer, finding, you know, templates and everything 
creating systems around it, and then in the end, you know, figuring out places where you can, you know, leverage things differently. Um, you know, another, you know, another, the, I loved your, the, the envelopes and the licking stamp in example. The example that comes to my mind, it kind of is that lever long enough to, to lift the world. You know, if you've got a, a thousand pound boulder um, and you've got a, you know, a two foot teeter totter, you know, unless you're Hercules, you know, you're not going to be able to push that teeter totter down and get that boulder up, even though you have some leverage. But if you change the way you approach it, i.e., make a bigger lever or put more people on or do something else, you know, you change the way you approach it, then you'll be able to solve the issue. And I think that, to me, um, it sounds like that's really the core of the leverage discussion which is changing your approach to solving a problem you have. Um, if, you, you know, if the problem isn't getting solved the way you're doing it, change your approach and do something different, um, whether it's building yeah. leverage or doing something different to solve the problem, right? Yeah, and if I, if I can also add to that too, I, I think leverage is what creates opportunities, um, opportunities to excel. And uh, Paul, Paul Bukai, he's the creator of Gmail, uh, he said that hacking, uh, we're talking about hacks here, hacking is much bigger than uh, clever bits of code in a computer. It's how we create the future. And if you look at the history of, of mankind, um, all of the development, all of the progress came from leverage. When, when we discovered that you know, in ancient Egypt, people were, were moving stones with like, uh, ropes and um, you know, it, it was horribly inefficient. So all of the progress that happened over the span of human history uh, came as a result of leverage, and it's the responsibility of entrepreneurs to to find that leverage, to discover it, because we're operating in these complex and chaotic realms where there is no textbook for what we're doing. We have to find something new. We have to find those leverage points, and that's where the competitive advantage comes from. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because the other thing I think about leverage, there was, uh, you know, I know being a worldwide digital nomad, you're not watching a lot of TV because you're living you're, you're living the lifestyle. But there was a TV show here in America on um, called Leverage. Um, and the, the, the funny thing is part of what I think of when I think of leverage, I hate to say it is blackmail, but, it, you know, if you think about it, it's all about having the power to change things for good or for bad. You know, to find that one switch that, you know, you know, as I say, little hinges swing big doors. So, you know, you just find that one thing to make that massive shift, um, you know, that massive shift or that massive change in your, you know, in, in your business and, and in your life. Um, and while we, you know, while we know everything is, is progressive, if you, if you watch the beginning of the show with Danny's hero's journey, if you didn't, you go back and watch it now, but if you did, you realize that, you know, everything builds on each other. It's not necessarily that one moment, but in a lot of cases, when you hit leverage and you can find that leverage, it's amazing what happens when you can use that leverage to change things and to really up your game or to change um, you, you know, just to change the, you know, just to change the game, um, you know, and especially if you want to create a 10 hour a week, you know, lifestyle business, um, especially as a coach, you know, we have, we have a lot of coaches who watch the show and as a coach, you really need to be quote unquote, a late, the, the, you know, a lazy programmer, like we talked about it, whether it's with contracts, whether it's with websites, you know, you need to be able to create systems and you need to use the leverage that you got to, um, you know, to make things successful. So before we wrap it up, before I tell everybody what we need them to do next, Danny, I've got a quick question for you. You referenced your book a couple of times. Um, I want to make sure, is the book you were looking at, the new book you and I talked about, is upcoming or is it from a book they can buy or is it from that book I'm about to tell everybody to go get a free copy of? Which, which, where does it fall? Uh, at the moment, I have uh, four books available on Amazon. Um, Buy Your Own Island, which is the, the first one I wrote, with, which I mentioned. Um, and then I have three other books which focus on hacks. Uh, the, the last book I wrote is, is a book on hacking email. Um, so it's, it's basically like a systemized process for email outreach so that you can promote your business, your brand, um, your book, what have you. And the book that I'm working on currently is a book on sleep hacking. So. Um, Basically, it's, it's my own personal quest to overcome my life, almost lifelong persistent sleeping problems. 
And that's going to be that's going to be an epic book to read. We've got one more question. We're going to we're about to offer everybody a free copy of Buy Your Own Island. Um, when you talked about lazy programmer and creating systems, and I believe leverage, you kind of referenced you were looking back a little bit of notes in your book. I just want to know: is it in Buy Your Own Island, or is it in one of your other books? I want our audience to, to hear this because if it's in one of your other books, I want to buy your books. So, so uh, you know, so the stuff, the, the stuff we were talking about, lazy programmer creating systems and leverage, is it in Buy Your Own Island, or is it in the other books that you've got out there? Uh, you can go to section three of the book by your own island, um, and that is on. Uh, it starts on. I don't know about the, mo the, the movie book, but it's it's page one fifty one of the PDF, and that that focuses on um, how to build a location independent business, how to build a lifestyle business, um, and really identifying the the core characteristics, common characteristics of successful location independent entrepreneurs, and really focusing on that and, and learning how you can build a business the same way. Um, as, as far as the other books, um, my second book is, is if you are keen to freelancing, earning active income through freelancing. It's, it's a book on how to uh, accus uh, ac excuse me, acquire customers through online portals such as um, Upwork, which is a freelancing platform, and to acquire high paying clients. Uh, my fourth book is called Hack Email, which is also uh, very instructive if you want to kind of succeed in the online game, at least today's online game, is the way it's evolving. Excellent. So here we go, buyyourisland.com slash audiobook. Um, we've been I've been talking about this for the last couple of minutes, so there we've got the link on the screen. Uh, you can head out audio there. Dashboard. Yeah, audio, audio dash, dash. Yep, audio yeah. dash book. Um, the good news, I'm sorry, I had to swallow. The good news is it's on the screen, so when I mispronounce everything, at least they can at least they can see it. So for those of you who come back, come back if you're not watching, look on the screen. But head over to the link on the screen and you'll be able to download a free copy of By Your Own Island. Today we've been talking to our epic guest, Danny Flood, who's created a 10-hour week lifestyle business. He's traveling the world, been in over 30 countries, coming to us live today from Bangkok, that great old Oriental city. I'm not going to sing the song. Uh, but for those of you who grew up in the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. Danny, you've been an epic guest today. We've talked about your hero's journey. We've talked about being a lazy programmer and creating systems and using leverage. Um, I want everybody to go out, go download the copy of the book, buy Danny's other books, do whatever you can, get to know this guy. Danny, real quick before I wrap up and, and roll the credits, any last words of wisdom you want to leave with our audience today? Yes, today. Uh, no, I don't. If, if you want to uh, get in touch with me, uh, go visit my, my blog as well, openworldmag.com. I have a, a podcast as well. And if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook. You can look me up Danny Flood or uh, email me at danny at openworldmag.com. And if you uh, use the concepts that I, I talk about in my third book, uh, I'm sorry, my fourth book, Hack Email, uh, uh, then you're much likely, more likely to get a good result from me. <laughs> Oh, uh, epic. Well, once again, Danny, thank you for being epic guest today. For all you viewers, thank you for being epic viewers and watching today. And until next time, make it an epic day.